Most Americans know people who've struggled with drug abuse, and we all want to keep drugs away from our children. But what kind of drug policy will most effectively provide help to those who need it and keep our children safe? There are many possible approaches, but for the past 40 years, the U.S. government has maintained the same policy, total prohibition. Most of us take the drug war for granted. In fact, more than half of all Americans are too young to remember when and how it all started. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. Why did Nixon declare his war on drugs? Thanks to the fact that Nixon secretly taped his conversations, we can get a glimpse of Nixon's motivations. It was political, and it was used as a way to go after the student protesters, the anti-war protesters, and the hippies. You peel back the history, and this whole thing started from a racist perspective. And this is what Richard Nixon said, according to Halderman. He says, this is in the late 60s, right after the Civil Rights Movement. He says, you know, the, the problem is really the blacks. And what we have to do is devise a system to deal with that while not appearing to, hence the war on drugs. Well, you know, Nixon's such a mixed story because his support for drug treatment was really substantial and was admirable in many ways uh, compared to everybody who's come after him. But the other part, of course, was the massive crackdown. Federal agents in Florida today talked up the nation's largest coke bust ever. While the feds were busy cracking down on drugs, 11 states decriminalized marijuana, making possession a minor offense rather than a criminal act. And when Jimmy Carter was elected president in 1976, it appeared that the war on marijuana might be coming to an end. I support a change in law to end federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana, leaving the states free to adopt whatever laws they wish concerning marijuana. A 1978 scandal surrounding allegations that Carter's drug advisor, Peter Bourne, had snorted cocaine at a Christmas party derailed Carter's decriminalization hopes, and instead, the drug war continued to escalate. When Ronald Reagan was elected president in 1980, he got tough on drugs. Last year alone, over 10,000 drug criminals were convicted, and nearly $250 million of their assets were seized by the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration. Okay, last time, this is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. And while taxpayer dollars flowed to drug warriors, Nancy Reagan spearheaded prevention efforts with her Just Say No campaign. There's no moral middle ground. Indifference is not an option. We want you to help us create an outspoken intolerance for drug use. I am Mike Tyson, a professional fighter. You can keep drugs out of your life and knock them out of society by saying no. Say no to drugs. After being elected in 1988, George Bush got tough on drugs, too. Our 1990 drug budget totals almost $8 billion, the largest increase in history. Look, everybody wants to be cool, but doing it with crack isn't just wrong. It could be dead wrong. We've already transformed a national attitude of tolerance into one of condemnation. But the war on drugs will be hard won neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block, child by child. They want you to believe that this is some kind of knights in shining armor battle of good versus evil. I experimented with marijuana a time or two and I didn't like it and didn't inhale. In 1992, Admitted pot smoker Bill Clinton was elected president, and he got tough on drugs, too. We had submitted the biggest drug budget ever. We have dramatically increased uh, control and enforcement at the border. We supported uh, a crime bill that had 60 death penalties, including the death penalty for drug kingpins. When George W. Bush was elected in 2000, he followed in his father's footsteps. And in the wake of 9-11, he launched a propaganda campaign attempting to link drug users to terrorists. You killed me. What? 
there's a bomb. I was going to school. What did that have to do with me? You brought drugs. As the feds continued to escalate the war on drugs, states began passing laws allowing the medicinal use of marijuana. Predictably, the feds under Bush cracked down on medical marijuana dispensaries, arguing that federal law trumps state law. In 2007, a solid majority of Americans supported the medicinal use of marijuana. Mitt Romney, however, did not. I have muscular dystrophy that's completely against my DNA. I'm sorry to hear my, that. Uh, my question for you is, will you arrest me and my doctors if I get medical marijuana? I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not in favor of medical marijuana being So will you have me arrest Hi. How are you? Of course, waging war isn't free and the amount of taxpayer dollars devoted to the drug war has increased significantly since Nixon declared war. If one wants to compare the drug war of the late 60s, early 70s to today, start off with the Federal Bureau of Narcotics in 1967, the lead federal drug control agency. I think its budget was $3 million. Now the budget of its successor agency, the DEA, is over $2 billion a year. Do you realize that half of what we spend on law enforcement, the courts, and the prisons is drug-related. How much money in total has the U.S. government spent waging its war on drugs? The best estimate, it was one that was come up by the AP, uh, it was that we spent roughly a trillion dollars on this war on drugs.